Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you are all doing good. Um, thanks to everyone who watched my last video. Much appreciated. Um, today, we're going to be looking at my Opolar air duster. Unfortunately, it's bitten the dust, literally. Problem was, uh, just recently, the battery wasn't holding charge for quite a long time. It was saying it was charging. There's a little light somewhere on here. A uh, little indicator to let you know that it's charging. Where is it? It's just in there. Um, so it was charging, but it wasn't ever ending. Now and again it would work for a little while, maybe a minute or two, and steadily over a period of time, eventually this little charge light wouldn't go out. And then if I pulled a cable out of it after a few hours and then tried it, nothing's working. So I was guessing that the batteries had it. This one's actually rated at 6,000 milliampere's hours. I think that's how you say it. So my first thought was I opened it up. I've already done some stuff already, so um, to save a bit of time. Uh, it's quite simple to open these. You've got a silver cap on the bottom here. Um, you just pull that away. And then you've got some screws, uh, four of them. You take them out. And then the thing actually splits apart, the little uh, trigger will come out. There's a couple of rings there, you just pull off there and pull off there. And then, uh, yeah, you can split it open. You have to cut this label down here. So it says its input, input voltage is 5 volts. Its current is 2 amps. Its output power is 40 watts. The battery is 6000 mAh. It's a... Uh, made in China and it's got a Lion battery L8650 so inside it's quite basic obviously you've got your fan there a couple of circuit boards your um, on and off here spring to make sure the trigger keeps going in and out and obviously your battery which is soldered up here to these two points so uh, taking this battery haven't unsoldered it yet but it's just stuck down in here Let's see if we can get it out. But there's nothing actually written anywhere on the battery to confirm that it is 6,000 milliampere hours. Um, so, I tried to get in touch with Opola, uh, sent them a, well, I tried their phone number first. They're based in London apparently. According to their website, uh, number was out of service. There is a way of emailing them, so I emailed them about two weeks ago, no reply. So just wanted to see if a, a battery would be available. They're quite expensive, these air dusters. They're around 60, 60 pounds. So they're not cheap air duster. So I thought, right, okay, what I'll do is I'll look around for another 6,000 milliampere hour of um, air duster and then take the battery out of it and put it into this one because obviously it's more of an expensive air duster. So I had a look around on eBay and I found this one. This was only £20. Um, brand new. Uh, I've got a box here somewhere. So yeah, this is the uh, this is the box for it. Uh, compact portable, long battery life, type C charging, powerful blowing. Um, bit of a bit of instructions on the back of it. Comes with loads of different nozzles, which is pretty good. Um, what else have we got here? light on my help. So you actually read that a bit better. I don't know where that's going to come into focus. I've actually got my autofocus turned off because it keeps on jumping in and out. So unfortunately it's about as good as I can get it. But again it's type C charging, 5 volt, 2 amp, same as the other one. 68 watts. Uh, output airflow 7.2 kPa max, working temperature of 10 minus 10 to 50 degrees and then the weight and dimensions and then inside it it comes with uh, all sorts of different attachments uh, quite a few different like nozzles and then um, some more it comes with a charging cable uh, a little bag to put it in another nozzle brush nozzle direct no nozzle and then an adapter as well for some of these different nozzles I've opened up the other one 
uh, this one was a lot more difficult to open. Um, unfortunately the reason being is because unlike the other one with the silver bit on the bottom here you just kind of twist and pull off. This one has got these locating slots just here and then this is the bottom cap and it wouldn't just come off. Uh, I tried tapping it off, put this in a vise with a pad around it to protect it and then I thought I'll uh, give this a go but it wouldn't just tap off easy. In the end it's got four screws in it just around here. Um, I managed to get this top end away and then it's got a, like a like a sponge gauze just in the front here you can take out obviously there's the motor the fans at the back of it smaller board single board just here battery was living in there um, so as I got the top away it was up like this uh, so I can show you so I had it like that but it was still attached at the bottom so I just kind of wiggled this away and eventually the, the bottom cap sort of sprung off but I couldn't actually tap it off whether there's another way of doing it I'm not sure but when it's actually on there there's nothing around the outsides there's no slot to be able to put a screwdriver in or anything like that so in the end managed to get it apart took the battery out of it which just plugged into there so it was nice and simple um, it did have this extra pad attached to the battery which I'm assuming is a heat sensor so this was stuck to the battery uh, so I'll show you the battery so this is what's just come out of it this one here so it looks virtually the same um, this one has got some writing on it. So this, this um, I'm going to link this in the description, the one I've just bought, um, to take the battery out of it. This was claiming to be a 6,000 milliamp air hour, hour as well. This one says it's a JCY181850-3S, and this one says it's 3,000 milliamp air hours times three. So my guess is this battery is actually only a 3,000 milliamp air hours. This one hasn't got anything written on it. So what I'm going to do with this one, once I've unsoldered it, I'm going to um, take off the uh, the heat the heat shrink and see what it says on there. This one says it's 11.1 volts, 33.3 WH, 230304, uh, Shenzhen.co Limited. Saying that, just as I'm, I'm looking at this, this one is actually, I can just see here, there's a little bit of writing. So I think if I take this pad off, it should hopefully tell me what's on it. But it's, this isn't going to come off in one piece, is it? I think we know that, this foam here. So if I get the worst of it off, maybe I can clean it up. Hopefully not taking off the writing. Let's have a look. Well, that's the worst of it off. But I think that they've put uh, this sticky label, this uh, sticky pad, over the top of it. Let's have a little look under here. Might be able to just take it off like that. Looks like it will. But I thought I figured it'd be better to try and save the more expensive air duster. And obviously just out of curiosity, because these batteries don't... I mean, I'm not going to make one of these batteries myself, like one of these battery packs. Um, so I just wonder whether this is actually going to be possible. My only real concern is obviously they have a, a cut off. So when they're charging, they know when they're fully charged and then they stop charging and the little light will go out. So by changing this battery, I'm hoping that the circuitry here will know when to turn it off even though I've replaced the battery with a different one. So we'll, we'll have to see. But obviously what I'll do is I'll, once I've installed the battery, as long as all, everything works okay, what I'll end up doing is charge, uh, I'll run it down first, then I'll charge it up, see how long it lasts, and report back at the end of the video to let you know whether it knows to turn itself off from charging. And that's probably about the biggest concern I have. Other than that, they look like a sort of direct swap. The cable should be long enough to be able to, obviously we we'll have to cut this plug off but it looks like they should be pretty much a straight swap. Definitely exposing some letters here, but and some writing, but I don't know what's gonna whether there's any gonna be any relevant information on it. But yeah. I'm hoping if I get this off I might be able to just put some 
alcohol on it and hopefully it'll clean up the rest of the glue. It saved me having to cut the heat, the heat shrink off it. I might do that anyway though, just to see if there's anything writ written on the battery and what kind of batteries they put in these Opol Opolars. I mean, as I say, it's an expensive air duster for what it is. We're looking at um, about £60 to buy these. So you'd think that there'd be quality batteries inside it, but we'll see. I don't know if there's going to be enough information on here. I can sort of see some stuff. But it looks like only one line of writing across there. Let's see if I can clean it up a little bit. Right, and what we got? Looks like 18650, 2000 milliampere hours, 12 volt, 20201122. I'm not an expert with um with ratings of batteries and things like that, so maybe maybe this is right and it is 6000 but obviously what's written here it's saying 2000 but if anyone knows whether this is actually a 6000 or a 2000 if you could let me know in the comments that would be um that would be informative for everyone else because as i say these are listed as 6000 milliampere hours and then comparing that again with the other one this one is a 18650 as well but it does say dash 3s and this one is a 3000 milliampere hours, hours and it says times 3 11.1 volts 33.3 3 WPS 230304 so some of them do sort of match the 18650 definitely this one says JCY at the start this one says XSWY and then we've got as I say 2000 3000 11.1 .1 volt and 12 volt I can't actually test the rating of this battery because it's completely depleted and it won't charge anymore I did try that with my multimeter but it's not giving anything at all and it won't charge so I can't see what it would have peaked at a um, bit late for that unfortunately since that doesn't seem to work at all so I think the next thing to do is to um, get this one unsoldered and out of there uh, and then we'll see about installing this one and hopefully um, hopefully it'll power on at the moment we've got absolutely nothing just to demonstrate that nothing at all there so uh, yeah we'll see what we can come up with alright guys I will be right back I'll just set myself up to get this get this one taken off right okay um, soldering irons on I'll just add a little bit of flux hopefully make this solder flow a bit better let's see if we can get these uh, these cables off that's one that's the other one Just gonna see if I can wick away some of this old solder. Actually got my iron up pretty high. Uh, it's at 450 degrees. Just being careful of this plug next to it and the cables. Let's 
just put a little bit more flux on there just to make sure and get as much out of this as I can. I may actually have to remove this circuit board to fit the other battery because the batteries, uh, the cables came in from underneath. So I may have to do that. I don't know, I'm not too sure yet. I've just got to be careful with it. I don't want them touching each other because that other battery has got charge in it. I did test it on my multimeter. It had like 10.8 in there at the moment. It is, uh, as I say, it's brand new. And it does say to charge um, charge the battery straight out of the box. Don't use it before you've charged it fully up. So... to do that there we go so this one I'm gonna have to um, as I say I'm gonna have to snip the plug off the end of it and then strip the wires back so let's do that now what we don't want to do is cut through them both at the same time you're gonna be bridging it you're gonna get yourself a pretty bad spark so one at a time going to get as much cable as I can left over because this cable isn't particularly long it does look like it's going to be long enough to do what I need though so I'm going to get this right up as close as I can to the plug and as I say just one at a time I'm not going to cut them both that's one that's the second one and I'm going to strip this back This may not even work, but I figure I'd rather try and save this air duster rather than binning it. And I'm sure there must be many more of these air dusters out there that the batteries have failed and you can't buy replacements. And these aren't the easiest things to build, I wouldn't have thought. I mean, unless you know exactly what you're doing. Um, so, yeah, I figured this would be the way to do it. Uh, the way this one came out, it was um, the cables are on the top, sort of 11 o'clock. So that's the way we put it back in again, as long as it fits. It's got a little sponge on the back of it, which is going to help me actually, because um, we don't want this rattling around in here. So just make sure it does fit okay. And what also what I want to do is I want to make sure that there's the same sort of room either side. So there is a sticky pad at the bottom here still. It's still quite tacky, so I think this is going to be good enough rather than having to add more. May have to put something across here though. Obviously, the other one got destroyed. So let's just hope that the cables reach. And they're going to be tight. How about this one here. Okay, so yeah, I think first things first things first, should we just actually see if this is actually going to work. So crudely, I'm just going to put these um, these cables in and make sure this actually is going to work before we go any further. Fingers crossed. Should be enough to test. Here we go. In fact, let's do it like that. And it works absolutely fine. So it was the battery that's had it. Um, problem we're going to have now, though, um, after looking at this, these cables aren't long enough. When this is when this is in situ, this isn't going to be long enough. Particularly this red one. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to get this one. And I'm gonna take cut the wire here and here, and I'm gonna join it on this one and this one uh, with a little bit of um, heat shrink tubing. So I'm gonna go and find some of that, and then uh, we'll get these all soldered up, and then we'll go from there. In hindsight, obviously, if I'd known, I would have just left these soldered. So good learning curve for anyone who might be tackling this job. If you end up getting one that's got short cables on it leave these two soldered to these and then cut the wire one at a time 
and then join it to these ones here with some heat sink uh, heat shrink tubing okay I'll see if I'm going to find some of that and I will be right back okay so uh, yeah back with a little update so I've um, prepared a couple of wires here just a couple of small extensions found myself a bit of a uh, heat shrink tubing and all I did was just cut this down a little bit so I've robbed it off there so now I'm just gonna join that join that and then um, get them soldered onto these points here I'm gonna put it under the microscope just to make life a little easier so um, I'll get that set up and uh, let's get it all um, let's get it all installed
Okay guys, so yeah, um, as you can see, a little bit fiddly. Would have been a whole lot easier if um, if I just left these two already connected. The wires did look long enough on the face of it, and when I kind of offered it on top, it looked about right, but unfortunately I needed extending. Um, would have been easier with some helping hands. But um, yeah, as you can see, we've got it all um, got it all wired up now, um, and the heat shrink is on there as well. So yeah, let's see if we can get this installed now. So as I said before, there is a bit of extra foam on the back here, which is going to keep this in there tight. And there is a bit of double sided down there already that still feels tacky. So hopefully it'll be all okay. And just push this into there like that. That should be good enough. So the plan is, uh, I'm going to put it all back together again. Uh, and then the plan's going to be, uh, I'm going to use it. I've got a few things I need to do with it. I'm going to run it down so it's empty. And then um, after that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge it up. And it should take three to four hours. Normally get about 20 minutes use out of it on that kind of charge. So I'm going to charge it up afterwards and make sure that the uh, circuitry knows to turn it off. Um, if it starts creeping into four or five hours without it turning off, then um don't know if I can recommend this. But... Um, you guys know me, I just like tinkering, uh, I'm not saying this is the right thing to do, uh, I'm pretty sure there must be people out there with these devices that are either throwing them away because they can't find the batteries or they're doing something I'm doing now. So as said though, I will link the old, um, the replacement air duster in the description and as I say, other than these wires being short, um, it looks to be a sort of direct swap, even though the battery that was initially in this is 2000, well, has written on it 2000 um, milliamp hours on it, and this one has 3000, but they're supposed, both the, supposed to be 6000 according to their specs. So, if anyone does know in the comments whether these are both 6000 and it's just something I'm missing, probably, uh, I'm no expert. But if not, it's interesting that they are advertising them with 6,000 milliamp hour hours um, when on there there's not it's not written that. This one's got 2,000, this one's got 3,000. So uh, yeah, so let's get this thing put back together again. Hopefully all of this will fit back in okay. Um, one thing I was thinking about doing was replacing, there was foam on here. Um, so I'm thinking now maybe I should be replacing it with something else like a maybe a pad or something like that. I guess that's to keep it in there tight and stop it rattling around and to also give it some protection against the, uh, the top case. So I think I've got some pads, so like foam pads, so let's see if we can get one of those on there. Just see if I can get rid of the rest of this first. But I hope you guys are enjoying the video, um, hopefully finding it informative. Um, try to keep my channel as varied as possible, just as and when things turn up that I need to looking to try and repair this one broke stopped working about a week and a half two weeks ago I did open it up to have a look inside off camera and then I put my multimeter across the battery and it wasn't reading anything at all right let's see if we can uh, find something to put across the top of this probably have to cut it down I've got some of these um, they came free with a number plate that I ordered recently. I think they might just do the job. Let's have a look. Obviously can be cutting down a little bit, but hopefully that'll do it. Well if that sticks, that'll probably be alright. Oh yeah, that's stuck alright. I've still got this bit of foam that was on the old battery. It's a little bit ripped, but I think it's still it still do it still do the job. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and peel back this double sided the top to this double sided tape and then stick that to it. Let's see if that works. Let's 
see how accurate I was now with the, the width. I did it by guess, didn't I? So, so I figured if I just kind of stick that on there like that, maybe there's a little tiny piece missing at the bottom there, but it probably makes no difference, but I thought it would be worth uh, giving that a go. I suppose the question is now, is um, what to do with the old one. Obviously I've robbed the battery out of it and um, well I shouldn't really send it back should I and say it doesn't work. <laughs> Before I put the screws back in it, I am going to make sure it still works. On these you have to double tap them to start them. And then tap again to turn it off. Perfect. So, once again, I'm going to put the screws back in. Then I'm going to take it away and uh, use it for a bit. I've got some stuff I need to do with it. I'm going to let the battery run right the way down. And then I'm going to charge it up. I actually use a um, 5 volt 2 amp um, charger uh, that you plug in at the mains. It does, they, they, I think they do come with ones that you can use to plug in via your computer or USB source. Uh, but in the manual it does say 5 volt 2 amp. Um, so I actually bought a charger for it, um, a mains one. So that's what I'll be using to charge it back up again. I'm pretty sure you could use like um, an iPhone charger. I think they're 5 volt, 2 amp. You'd have to double check. There's, yeah, it's obviously written on there somewhere on the back. Um, but something like that anyway. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to charge it back up and uh, babysit it for a few hours. Make sure it don't um, nothing happens. And hopefully it will charge and turn off. So as I said at the start of the video, this little light here, it illuminates orange when it's charging, and when it's charged that light should go out. So as long as that light goes out, um, yeah, I'll be happy with it. So these rings here, these go back on here. Um, I had a look at the other, um, so these are the attachments that come with this particular one. And they actually fit inside. Um, they actually fit inside. And then that's the storage one. So whichever one you're using, when you finish with it, you can put one underneath like that and the other one in the top there like that. On the other one, with the attachments that came with that, let me grab one of them. I noticed that in theory, could actually use these attachments, but you wouldn't be able to use these metal rings because these attachments seem to be slightly bigger. So they actually fit over where this ring would normally sit. So that is an option. You could use all of the attachments that come with the other one, and uh, but you'd have to take the little chrome ring off to make it happen. I know, see, it doesn't want to go on there anymore because the chrome ring's, ring's stopping it. But yeah, it is a possibility. And then um, all we need then is this. It goes back on the bottom of it. Don't think it's sided. I actually do put things face down so I know when they go back on they're going to be the right way round. And that just pushes back on like that and that stops the whole thing coming apart at the bottom. But yeah. And uh, yeah, the only thing you missed me doing at the start was I just run a, a blade down there just to cut this label because I couldn't get in there. But it does say input 5 volt, uh, input current 2 amps, output 40 watts. And it does say battery 6,000 milliampere hours but as I say the battery has only got 2000 written on it but that may be just what they do so if anybody does know please let us know in the comments for everyone else to know as well okay I'm gonna uh, find a nozzle and go and do some dusting <laughs> so I'll report back in a few hours when this is all um, when it's all been tested and used depleted and recharged see you soon guys So back with a little update, I um, did use it and let it run down and I charged it up and the LED indicator did go out to say that it was fully charged. So um, that's a definite plus. I'm using a 5 volt 2 amp 10 watt USB charger and 
thought I'd just put my multimeter across it to see what voltage is now in the battery and we've got best part of 12.2 which is about right as far as I been the googling that I've been doing on this to find out how much it should actually ch charge it should hold um, it's 4.2 times 3 so that gives us 12.6 so uh, we've got 12.2 so it's about right uh, so it's not overcharging obviously if you do attempt this fix then it's highly recommended that you um, you keep an eye on it you know um, charging when I had um, when I depleted the battery after using it for a while I uh, took the cover back off again as it is now and every hour or so I put my multimeter across to see how the charge was going uh, just to make sure that it you know that it's obviously when you when you're swapping batteries out and you're charging things up and you're expecting the circuitry to know and to turn it off so I was just being cautious with it so I advise anyone doing this to be uh, approach with caution as well uh, but yeah it just turned itself back off again so yeah it's, it's so far so good but I will be keeping an eye on it as well for the next few charges just to make sure that it does actually turn itself off I think in the manual it says it should take three to four hours which is about right so yeah on the face of it very happy with it um, looking back on it what I would have done differently is leave uh, these two here soldered on there was no need for me to unsolder them really um, it would be doable looking at it I think it would be doable if you left the wires on here on the old battery and then cut them somewhere back here you could swing them out and then you could join the battery up and then swing the battery in um, but other than that um, I'm pleased with it as I said before earlier in the video I'm pretty sure there's a lot of these out there that the batteries are running down on them and they're um, not working anymore I mean a lot of people will probably say well why don't you just use the the brand new air duster that you bought in my mind I wanted to know if this was going to work for the purposes of the video hope I may be able to help someone else out in the same boat and also I prefer this air duster it cost me £60 so the other one cost me I think I got it a best offer sent to me for £20 I think it's like £23, £24 but they sent me an offer so I think I paid £20 just under for it um, and uh, yeah I wanted to get this one back up and running again so yeah I did say that I was going to um, see if we can take this old battery pack apart and see if there's actually anything written on the uh, batteries themselves so very carefully I'm going to see if I can open this up I mean I've never made any uh, battery pack like this before um, I'm, uh, I'm going to guess there's probably nothing written on it but for the purposes of the video I think we should have a, a little look inside and see if we can actually see anything written on any of these batteries to confirm what milliampere hours they actually are but ready it's looking like there's nothing written on them but we'll keep going and see if there's anything else inside yeah there's nothing written on them um, I'm guessing you know if you if you were any um, any good uh, you could possibly maybe you could make these yourself and get your own batteries to your own specifications as you can see here they're all they're all bridged together so you've got this one joined to that one and then that goes into this board and then it comes back out of the board and then goes down to that one and then on these ones here let's have a look much the same system I should imagine yeah so we've got that one joined to that one this one was joined to that one this one is joined to this one on the positive and then that comes down to the board and then that back up to that one so you've actually got two here positive and a negative there and the same here two negatives one positive so yeah and then there's obviously some glue holding them together and then they're all wrapped but I guess for anyone who might be of interest whether there's actually anything written on these batteries there isn't so there is a way of testing 
milliampere hours but that's beyond the scope of my video I'm sure there must be some other people out there I believe what you have to do is you have to draw a current from it um, and then from that current then you then measure that but again a bit out of the scope of this video but yeah thought just for thought we'd just take it apart and see what's actually going on in there I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you found it informative uh, or just maybe just found it interesting um, always got to say appreciate everyone out there that's subscribed anyone that's uh, possibly even shared my videos anybody that's um, yeah taken time out to see what I'm up to you know it's one of those it's one of those things I um, I will make videos as and when I can whenever I feel like there's a video worth making um, they do take up quite a bit of time to do them so I appreciate all the thumbs out there can't say thank you enough as always, I hope you guys take it easy out there, whatever you end up doing. Thank you so very much for everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.